I'm Imogen from Waffle TV and I'm joined here by Vicky Stone. Um, tell us a bit about your show this year. Um, my show this year is called Hot Mess and the venue's very hot and I get a bit of a mess by the end of it. <laughs> is that where the name came from then? Uh, yeah, well it, Hot Mess is kind of like a, it's one of those American terms. It's like, it, it's, it's, people think it's a compliment but it's not. You know, it's one of those backhanded compliments. It's, it's sort of it's sort of one of those terms that people say, you know, it kind of means that it means that at kind of the beginning of the night you look good, but by the end, but by the end, by the end you've got like a yeah face made of makeup, you your boobs falling out <laughs> the top. You know, it's that sort of thing. That sort of thing. That's 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 what can we expect from your show? Um, Are you going to be doing some musical numbers? Yeah, there's, there's some musical numbers. There's some audience participation. Uh, there's there's a lot of surprises. There's some big big props and it's cheese as well. It's real cheese. Yeah. Refrigerated as well. What cheese for the audience? Yeah, well, you, you, can, you can win cheese. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to tell you how. That's a great that, that, that so that's the surprise. That's to make that. people come watch your show. Yeah, because you know, if you're a cheese fan, it really is very tense. <laughs> Do people get quite excited about getting that cheese? Some people, yes. <laughs> Where do you get your inspiration from? Fridge. <laughs> you opened the fridge. That, there it was. There it was. Yeah. And that's what your jokes and your songs are about. No, there's just, there's just the one bit that's about cheese. Uh, a lot of my inspiration is from the telly. So, you know, like, like I've got a song about Philip Schofield, a bit about Hilary yeah. Bay, a bit about Noel Edmonds. You know, I'm quite. I basically don't have a job. Uh, so I just watch daytime TV and then call it work. And then you comment on it and... <laughs> yeah, basically, basically, if I write a song about Deal or No Deal, let's say, it means that every time I'm watching Deal or No Deal, that time is a tax expense. And you actually got to perform your song for Philip Schofield, the one that I you did. wrote about him. Did you get embarrassed about that? No, I mean, I didn't get embarrassed about it because I was performing... Um, right, so I wrote the song, Philip Schofield's song. It's a, it's a dirty version online and there's a clean version that I did on this morning. Um, couldn't say things like lube or... Sorry, is this meant to be clean? Oh, no, it's all right. Is it okay? Sorry. <laughs> I just... Oh, there's all the little things that I couldn't say on TV. How did you manage that then? Did you have to just... Well, we sent a lot of emails to ITV compliance, uh, and, and they, we got an email back saying, whilst wear me like a glove puppet and massage me from within isn't swearing, I don't think it's suitable for a date on the ground. So you had to change the lyrics? So we had to change the lyrics, yeah. It's a difficult one. But Philip, Phil was very appreciative of the lyric chat. <laughs> that made it a bit less awkward. <laughs> Did you get to talk to him before and after? No, I, I rehearsed with floor managers sitting in Phil and Holly, and so I didn't actually meet Philip Schofield until it, until it was live. Oh, no. I was, it was, and he was there, like a foot away from me. I was like, try and keep it together. And then what, what, what about afterwards? Did he comment oh, on yeah, it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Afterwards, you know, he was very nice. Yeah. Are you quite obsessed with him then, if you wrote a whole song about him? Pretty obsessed, yeah. I mean, if you're writing songs about people, that's that's a commitment. <laughs> Are you writing any more songs about anyone else? Uh, well, there's this new song about Sunita in my show. Big fan of Sunita. I really love So Macho. Mm -hmm. I was going to say her body of work, but that's all she's done is So Macho. You're yeah. probably way too young. Yeah, yeah, yeah you I, have, I don't know. He's gotta be so macho. It's basically, no, it's, the video is, um, she's just in a shrink's office. Uh -huh. uh, do you know Forget it. I think you just need to watch. Just watch. Just really watch, watch it. Yeah. With, yeah. with Sunita, I think. Well, will I be a big fan after watching her? Huge fan. Because <laughs> she's pretty talentless, but she made the best of it. How did you get into comedy in the first place? Sunita. <laughs> Sunita. <laughs> watching, watching things like So Macho, I thought that's... Yeah, I mean, you know, she, she's a good example of someone that had a pop career that yeah. really shouldn't have. Um, and I think that, that sums me up. <laughs> did you ever consider getting into anything else, like just music, or you um, always wanted to be well, comedian slash? I gave, you know, I used to do a bit of musical theatre. So my first Edinburgh was like when I was 14, uh, and I did some musicals. So I, I used to do the whole singing and dancing thing. It's a bit of dance in my show. Um, one of the reviewers has said, though, uh, said that my dancing was a bit dodgy, but I actually tried really hard. So that, <laughs> and I was in the top set of dance and drama school. So, I think so you know, maybe she didn't know what she was talking about. It's a bit rude, I think. Yeah, that is just rude. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so, because I'm, I'm actually pretty, pretty skilled when it comes to busting the moves. I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, well, thank you very much for coming to talk to us. My pleasure. So your show's going to be on till the 26th, but not on the 14th. No. Um, at 8, 10 p.m. at the Underbelly Bristol Square. Yes. Yeah. So make sure to go see her.